Hello everybody, this is Tabby. She's letting everybody know that the game coming up next is the Mark Fidget Replay start number 22 against the Oakland A's as the Tigers head west. Mark Fidrich against Mike Torres. It's coming up next. Detroit at Oakland. And here it is. Hello everybody, welcome to another start in the Mark Fidrich Replay. This week start number 22, and we're on the West Coast here at Oakland Coliseum, where the opponent will be the Oakland A's, and the mound opponent will be Mike Torres, the right-hander. Mike Torres, in two, 1976, was 16-12 and 12 with a 2.50 ERA. Let's look at the replay stats through 21 starts. The top row is the replay numbers, or are the replay numbers, and the bottom row are the actual numbers to this point. So very close, 185 to 182, 153 to 152, 44 to 42, 10 to 5, that's kind of the ones that's kind of skewed a little bit of the home runs. Walks are almost identical. A little more strikeouts. Uh, 15 and 5 in real life with a 2.11 ERA and 13 and 6 with a 2.08 ERA in the replay. So very happy with the numbers thus far. And now let's get everything into place so that we can get this start number 22 underway. I want to make sure that everything is in view. And the first 9 innings are in view there. All right, so Mike Torres on the hill. And he'll be facing this lineup for the Tigers. Ron LaFleur is in center. Dan Myers in left. Ben Ogilvie's in right. Rusty Staub the DH. Jason Thompson at first. Aurelio Rodriguez at third. Mark Wagner at short. Bruce Kim catching. And Chuck Scrivener at second base. For the A's, Bill North in center. Burt Campanaris at short. Don Baylor's in right. Joe Rudy's in left. Sal Bando is at third. Gene Tennis the catcher. Billy Williams the DH. Bill Garner at second, and Wayne Gross at first base. And star 23, he will go back home again and take on the Milwaukee Brewers. Kind of around Labor Day, I think it was. This game was played August 29th in Oakland. All right, so Ron LaFleur and the Tigers getting all set. And let me check my focus and everything on here to make sure everything is copacetic. And I think it is. I might need to load, bring these down just a hair so you can see everything. I think you can see everything now. All right. So we are ready to go. So we have to wait till the bottom of the inning for the Fidrich replay numbers to begin. But right now, it's they got to get runs for him there. They uh, only got three runs against the White Sox last start. So he would like some more runs than that. And Mike Torres is going to start off facing Ron LaFleur. That's a 3-4. 3-4 on Torres is a home run question mark. Right-handers 1-3, to three, that's an 8, so there's no home run chance whatsoever. Torres just doesn't give up the long ball in 1976 very often. And now we check the floor. 4-4 four, four is a question mark 7 against right-handers. Anything at 12 or less will be a hit. That's a 7. 7 falls in this D category, 4-8, to eight, so it's a leadoff double for Ron LaFleur. How about that? Leadoff double. He won't try to steal, but we do need to roll the strategy roll because Torres has a chance of a pickoff and a pickoff error. This has to be a 20 to invoke that. It's not, so we drive on. Dan Meyer, the batter. 2-3 on Torres is a blank. We go on to Dan Meyer. 2-4, star line once, ground ball to second, and with that hit being hit to the right side, LaFleur will automatically take third. So Meyer does his job, a little small ball, getting the runner over. And now, with only one out, he can score on a ground out, a fly out, or whatnot, because the A's are going to play the infield back. They'll give up the run early uh, to avoid a possible big inning. So let's roll, make sure there's no strategy roll. There is not. Torres to Oglevy. 2-3, and that's another blank against the same roll he had last time. That 2-3 was a blank. Oglevy a 3-1, and that's a fly to right chance of a sacrifice fly. His sacrifice fly rating is a three, so we'll roll and see if it's going to be a sacrifice fly. It is, so good play there. Talk about your small ball. A double, a ground ball to the right side, and a sacrifice fly. 
And that takes care of it. One run is on the board for the Tigers. They'll lead it one to nothing. And like I said, small ball on display. Brings up Rusty Style with two outs and the base is clear. We get a 3-4, and that's a again the home run question mark, but and a one to eight for lefties, and that is an eight. So we will be checking Staub's home run numbers, which is a nine. He needs a one to nine to hit it out of here. Twelve, he does not, so we go finish the at bat on Staub's cart. 3-1. He won't hit a homer, but he will single to left field. So he keeps the inning going. He cannot run anywhere, so he's not going to try to steal. We will roll the strategy roll for the possible pickoffs, and there is none. So Jason Thompson, the batter. 6-5. And against a lefty, that is a star line. So automatic out for Torres. And it's going to be a, ground, a, G, a star line 4, which is a ground ball to third. And the inning's over. But the Tigers pick up a run. Like I said, they play small ball. Double, ground ball to the right side, and a sacrifice fly. Can't get any more small ball than that without a bunt. And now we go to the bottom of the first. Fidrich looking to redeem himself from that previous game against the White Sox, where he took the loss, 4-3. to three. All right, here's Bill North. You want to keep those speedsters off the base pass as much as possible, I do believe. Let me check and make sure. Yeah, I think we've got, I think that's focused okay. Make sure we're not losing any kind of focus there. This new camera, or new phone, the camera on the new phone, you got to watch it because it can switch on you on a dime until I get used to it. All right, so Fidrich, 3-6, and I guess the righty, that's a strikeout chance, but against the switch hitter lefty, that's a blank, so we move on to Bill North. 3-5, three, 3-5, five. is going to single pass first base, so that's a base hit, and he's going to definitely be looking to run. His attempt is a 10, so let's see if he gets the jump. It's a 12. It's a hit and run. So we got a hit and run for Burt Campanaris. The hit and run is invoked anytime you're either one or two over that number. So hit and run is invoked because of the 12 is two more than the 10. So we, first of all, we will roll the strategy roll to make sure. Well, we just roll the strategy roll. Never mind. So we do the strategy. Uh, we do the bat for Fidrich to make sure it's no strikeout. Then we worry about the hit and run. So one three, it's an automatic star line. Let's see what the star line is. It is a two, which is a ground ball to short. So now they were playing at double play depth, which turns Campanaris' double play rating into a two. The hit and run, let's see here, on all hit and runs, let's look at the chart. All ground ball double play ratings are minus two, so that will put him down to a zero. So there's no chance of a double play. So the only play is going to be at first base. And with that, it's going to be a ground out with the runner advancing. So North will take second base. And the star line, I think I said, was a ground ball to short. So it's a 6-3 ground out. The only play being to first base. All right, so the hit and run, by the fact that it was a hit and run, it took the double play completely out of the equation. So just runner advance. And with one out, here's Don Baylor. Uh, North's not going to try to run, but we will roll to see if there's a pickoff. There's not. So here's Baylor. 5-4 off Fidrich is a range play. So we go to Baylor's card for the range. 3-5. And 3-5 is a star line 2, which is a ground ball to short. So we're checking the range of the shortstop, Wagner, who is a 4. Did I write that down right? I didn't think his range was that good. Let me double check it. Yeah, it is. Wagner's range, just to verify, is a 4-14. So, there you go. So, 1 through 4, he makes the play. To 3, he makes the play. And the runner will have to hold. And put that ball hit to shortstop. So, BR3 for North. Not nearly enough to get to short. So, now there's 2 down for Joe Rudin. As Fidrich tries to pitch out of this. Nothing on the strategy roll. Fidrich, 5-6, possible error on a ground ball. So we'll check the, to see if there is a ground ball. Go to Rudy's card. 4-6, there is a ground ball to short. So the error rating of Wagner is a 14, but that's a 20. So even though he's got a high error rating, the 20 on the D20 saves his bacon. And Wagner makes the play again. He made all three plays there after that leadoff single. So Fidrich pitches around that, and after one inning, the Tigers 
come away still with a one nothing lead on the Oakland A's. And now that'll bring up Mike Torres to face Aurelio Rodriguez to start the second. 1-3, and that would be a star line against a lefty, but Rodriguez is a righty, so that's a blank. Move on to Rodriguez. 6-1, he's got a single pass second base. So Aurelio Rodriguez gets the base hit. His attempt is a 1, so we'll see if anything happens to take place here. It does not, so nothing's going on. Infield is at double play depth for Wagner, who's a double play rating of uh, 1. He'll be up to two now because the infield's halfway. Torres, 2-4. Potential walk. That's a seven. He's a six. The ballpark adds nothing, so there is no walk. We skip that. Go to Wagner. One six. Question mark seven. A one through 13 would be a hit. That's an eight. That falls in the category of a double. So Mark Wagner with a double. And that double uh, with the one six, that's a seven there. It means it doubles to left field. Left fielder Rudy's a minus one arm, and Rodriguez is a BR of two. That drops him down to a one, and then to score from first on a double to left, you lose one. That makes him a zero, so he cannot, he, he doesn't have a chance to score. He's got to stop at third base. So second and third, nobody out, and now the infield's going to have to come in because they're already down one to nothing. They can't afford to give up more cheap runs. So Torres now. Good strategy roll. Nothing happening. Bruce Kim, infield is in. 1-3, another chance for a star line, but that's against the lefty. He's a righty, so it's a blank. Go to Kim. 6-4, and he's going to single pass first base. So yet another hit. Can Wagner score from second? To score from second on a single pass first, you need a 4 through a 6 BR rating. And Wagner's BR rating is only a 2, so he has to hold. So he will hold at third base on the single by Kim, but Rodriguez scores from third. It's now two to nothing in favor of the Tigers with runners on the corners and nobody out. Kim does have an attempt of three, so we'll see if anything going on with that. And it's a three, so he will try to steal. He's an 11. Minus one from Torres drops him to a 10. Tennis is a plus one, though, so that brings him back to an 11. One to 11, Kim steals it. And he does, so that takes away the double play. Bruce Kim steals second base, puts runners at second and third. And like I said, it takes the double play away. All right, now, strategy roll to see if anything's going on here. Nothing. Infield is in. Here's Scrivener. Torres, 3-5. That's a possible wild pitch. That's an 18. And it's over the wild pitch and pass ball checks, so it's just a foul ball. Reroll. 4-2, strikeout chance. That's a 19, though. Way too high for that. So go to Kim to finish. 2-6, ground ball to third. And with the infield in on the ground ball to third, the infield being in, you subtract 2 from the run rating of the runner at third. Wagner's a 2, he subtracts a 2, so he has to hold. And that's going to be an easy play. Sal Bando over 2. Wayne Gross for out number one. Runners had to hold. No choice to move up there. All right, LaFleur is up. Nothing on the strategy. Infield still in. Torres, 5-4. Would be a star line if he's a lefty, but he is a righty. So, obviously, Torres looked like he did a whole lot better against lefties than he did righties. So, kind of inverse splits there. And now let's look at uh, LaFleur. 3-6 for LaFleur. Ground ball to third again with the infield in. And again, the runner's going to have to hold. Because of his BR being two, he can't go anywhere with the infield in. So it's another 5-3 ground out. And now the infield can go back to normal with two outs for Dan Meyer. Strategy roll, nothing happening. Torres to Minor, 1-3. He gets the 1-3 again. This time he is facing a lefty. It is a star line. So the Tigers will miss a golden opportunity to add more runs. That's a three, which is a ground ball to first. Wayne Gross steps on the bag. Innings over. One run is in. They could have had a lot more. It may come back to bite them later. We'll see. At the end of one and a half, it is two nothing Tigers over the Oakland A's. And Sal Bando, the man who made those couple of defensive plays there. Wait a minute. Is that on? Yeah, he made two out of three defensive plays in a row to keep the score where it is. And now here is Fidrich facing Bando. 
Three one is a blank on Fidrich. We'll go to Bando. Three six for Bando's ground ball to short Wagner. We'll take care of it. One down. Brings up Gene Tennis. Five four. That is a range play. So we go to Tennis for the range play. Three three, and that is a grounder back to the pitcher Fidrich. He's got a range of five. So unless this is a six, it'll be an out. And then it's an easy play there for Fidrich. Two up, two down. Fidrich very nimble around the mound, apparently, with that range of five. Here's Billy Williams, sweet swinging Billy Williams. This is the final year of his career. Trying to hang on as a DH. One, two is a strikeout chance. Fifteen is too much, so we move on to Williams' card. Five, two, and he's going to fly to left. Put away out there by Dan Meyer, and it's a one, two, three inning. For Fidrich, at the end of two, it is two nothing Tigers over the A's. And Fidrich has been facing a lot of NL West teams, so he finally gets back to the NL East on his next start against the Brewers. And that's a September 3rd game. This is an August 29th game. All right, Ogilvy, sacrifice fly his first time. 5 3 is a blank on Torres, so we move on to Ogilvy. 5 2, it's a Starline four, which is a ground ball to third. So one away, and that brings up Rusty Staub. Four one, strikeout chance. Staub, only a six, so no strikeout. Stadium it doesn't do anything for any effect on that. Three five. Three five for Staub. Is a ground ball to first. So Gross puts it away. Two down for Jason Thompson. 6-4. That's potential walk. And he will walk. He walks as a 17. That's only a 12. So it will be a two-out walk to Jason Thompson. His attempt is a 1. Let's see if he does anything. He does not. It's a 20, though, so that means it's a chance of a pickoff or a pickoff error. 1-2, to two, it's a pickoff. A 3, it's a pickoff error. A 4 through 20, nothing happens. Nothing happens. All right, so Thompson will just hold there. And here is Rodriguez. 5-1, ballpark card going to Oakland Co Alameda Colle Coliseum for the first time. See what happens there for Rodriguez. 5-6, he's going to ground it to short. And Campanaris puts it away to end the inning. We go to the bottom of the third. Still two to zip. Favor of the Tigers. Fidrich trying to rebound after losing that last game. Here's Phil Scrap Iron, Phil Garner. 4-3. This is last year with the A's before he moves on to the Pirates. 4-3. It would be a single if Fidrich was tired, but he's not, so it's a blank. Let's go to Garner to finish. 3-2. Star line 2. That is a ground ball to short. Wagner, again, up to the task. One away. For the number 9 hitter, Wayne Gross. You can see he only had 18 at-bats in the season, but he did start this game. An inside pitch carding just about everybody, you have these players without even having to print them. They come with the set, which is nice. 3-4, and that's a star line right there for Fidrich, so we'll see what the star line is. It's a 3, which is a ground ball to Jason Thompson. Two down. Two up, two down, and back to the top of the order for Billy North. 6-1. North's a switch hitter, so it's not going to be a walk chance. It's going to be a blank. Go to North, 6-4, ground ball to second. Put away by Scribner as he throws to Thompson to end the inning. So we go to the third, uh, sorry, we go to the fourth now. Three complete are in the books. It's the Tigers two, A's nothing. And Mark Wagner, no relation to Lyle, is going to lead things off. And he doubled his first time up but was stranded at third base. 2-4 is a potential walk. 14, though, is too much. His walk's only a six. So that's not going to happen. We go to Wagner's card, 5-6, and that is a star line 6, which is a fly to center for out number 1. Brings up Bruce Kim, 4-6. That's a blank on Torres. 2-3. Two, 2-3 three. Two, three is a fly to right, and that's 2 down. So 2 up, 2 down, and that brings up Chucky Scrivener. 4-3, and that's possible error. Scrivener, 3-6 is a fly to center. 
That's a four. The center fielder error rating north is a four, so it will be an error. It's a failed error check. So we go to our board for a failed error check. Failed error check, which is right here for center fielder. It's a drop ball for a two base advance. So Scribner will make it to second base on the E8. And that's an error on the A's. The A's won this game in real life two to one. So obviously that score won't hold up. The two, the one for the Tigers is not going to hold up because they've already got two runs. And now Scribner's at second with two outs for Ron LaFleur. Nothing on the strategy roll. Torres, 4-1. Strikeout chance, 17. Oh, too much. That's only He's got a 16, but that's a 17. And the stadium's not affecting it. So LaFleur gets a break. 6-3. Can't take advantage of it. He flies to right. Innings over. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Bottom of the fourth we go. Still two to nothing. Favor the Tigers. And Campy Campanaris will lead things off for the A's. Campanaris grounded to short his first trip. One two is a strikeout chance, but 12 against a right hander is too high. Had Fidrish been a lefty, that would have been a strikeout, but not the right hander. So we finish on Campy. 5-2. He's going to ground to second. And Scribner puts it away easily. One down. For the right fielder, Don Baylor. 3-3. And that's the ballpark card. So we're going back to Oakland Coliseum. For the at-bat, 1-4, though, is a ground ball to short. If we'd have found these two blanks, that would have been a rare play. But we found the ground ball to short. And Wagner puts it away. So Fidrich has that ground ball working. You can see a lot of the outs here are ground ball outs. A lone fly ball to left, but all the other outs are ground ball outs. So he's got the ground ball working. Joe Rudy. 4-1. Wild pitch, but nobody's on base, so it's just simply a foul ball. Reroll on Fidrich. 2-1's an error chance. See what Rudy's got going on. 3-5. Three, 3-5 five. Three, five is a fly to center. That's an 8. The error rating of LaFleur is a 6. 8's greater than 6, so there's no error. He will make the play. And it's a one, two, three, fourth inning. Down go the A's. We go to the fifth. It is two to nothing, Tigers. As Fidrich having a much better outing than last time. So we glad to see the White Sox leave. And even though he had to leave home and fly to the West Coast, he's liking Oakland Coliseum better. And those Oakland A's is liking facing them better. Here's Dan Meyer, grounded to second, grounded to first. 0 for 2. 4 5. 4 5 is a walk plus. I'm sorry, yeah, 4 5 is a walk plus chance. So his walk is a 6. The walk plus adds 10, makes it a 16, but that's a 17. So even with the walk plus, it will not be a walk. So we go to Meyer's card. 3 3, he's going to fly to left. So Dan Meyer, not very patient there and could not draw the walk, not even with the walk plus. Torres to Ogilvy, 6-1, possible hit by pitch. He's a 7. Torres is a plus 1, makes it an 8. And this is a 7, so that is a hit by pitch. So he plunks Ogilvy, and Ogilvy's attempt is a 4. That's a 2, so Ogilvy's going to try to steal. Again, minus 1 from Torres and a plus 1 from Tennis. Wipe out to a 0, so we strictly go by the stolen base number, which is 14. And he does it. Stolen base. Stolen base for Oglevy. He gets to second base with one out for Rusty Staub. Nothing on the strategy roll. Torres delivers to Staub. 2-4. That's a potential walk, and that's a 1, so it will be a walk. And that'll put two on with, nobody, with only one out without the benefit of a hit. And that brings up Jason Thompson. He has grounded the third and walked. Strategy roll, nothing going on. Torres, 3-4. That's a home run question mark. 1-8 to eight against a lefty. That's a 5. It passes that check. And that's gone because Jason Thompson's got a 20 right here. So the home run question mark, the way that works on the home run question mark, is you come down here and see who the batter is. The batter is left-handed. So it says here a 1-8. to eight. If, if that D20 is a 1-8, to eight, that means we move on to check the home run number on Thompson. That's a 5 which falls well within the 1-8. to eight. We go to Thompson. 
The ballpark can't take anything away from it, so the 20 is guaranteed. It is a three-run homer for Jason Thompson, and the Tigers have blown this thing open at 5 to nothing and given Mark Fidrich the run support he wants and desperately needs because he's tired of not getting run support. And now Torres is in trouble as the Oakland bullpen starting to move around down there. As Torres may not be much longer in this game. Okay, here's Rodriguez. One, two, and that's a home run straight up the bat. You don't have to check anything down here. It's a straight home run check. His home run's a six. That's a seven. He missed it by one. He just barely missed it. That's a seven. That's a six. So he just missed. If Torres was a lefty, that'd have been gone. But Torres catches a break. We check Rodriguez. Six, six. He's going to fly to left. So Rodriguez just got under it. Two down for Mark Wagner. Could have been back-to-back -back jacks. 5-2 is a blank. Move on to Wagner. 5-2 again. And that is a single pass second. So the inning continues. And Wagner has an attempt of one. So, so if he does anything, although he has no stolen bases on the season, so that's kind of unusual that he would even have an attempt. I guess he got caught once. All right, so nothing's happening. So now the batter is Bruce Kim. 6-6 six, six is the ballpark card. So going to the ballpark card. For the Bruce Kim at bat. Four, five, and that's a ground ball to short. So that's going to end the inning. But three runs come in, and the Tigers lead it five to nothing over the A's. And you wonder how much longer Torres can go, or how much longer they want to go with Torres. Maybe that's the better way to say it. But Torres is one of their aces, so they kind of, I think they at least want him to go six innings if possible. He can face 28 batters. Right now he's faced 26, so he's around the Around the edge, so the bullpen for the A's is loosening. And I think they might get some activity down there. Looks like a long reliever Stan Bonson, a right-hander, might be coming in for Torres in the sixth. I think he will. I think it's all for Torres. Torres has taken his hat and walked into the clubhouse. His day is done. So the new pitcher will be Stan Bonson in the top of the sixth. But right now, we're in the bottom of the fifth. It is Fidrish with a 5 0 lead. Sal Bando the batter. 1 1. That's a strikeout chance. That's a 3. He's gone. Struck him out. And that's the first strikeout of the game for Fidrish. He's not really a strikeout pitcher. No walks, no strikeouts in this game so far, which is not unusual. Only 50 walks in 250 innings, only 97 strikeouts in 250 innings. So he pitches to contact. Here's tennis. 6 1. Possible walk. As soon as I say that, he walks Gene Tennis. All right. That's just the way things work, I guess. All right, so Tennis is a one for his attempt. And it's a one, so he's going to try to steal. He's got a stolen base of 11. Minus three from Fidrich gives him an eight. Minus, three from, uh, minus two from Kim gives him a six. One to six, he'll make it. But do they want to steal down five? To, you know what? That doesn't even make any sense. He would not be stealing down five to nothing. So I'm going to override that roll. And just uh, use baseball sense, and he's going to stay put. Infield at double play depth for Billy Williams. We'll roll the strategy to make sure there's no pickoff, and there's not. So here's Billy Williams. 3 5, and that's a blank. So we move on to Billy Williams' card. 6 1, question mark 8. Against a right hander, it's only a 1 to 2. Against a lefty, weirdly enough, it's up to 18. That's very odd. Must have had some long balls against the lefties, uh, or more hits against the lefties somehow. But with that being a 2, that 17 is going to be an out, and to fly to center. And that's out number 2, with Tennis retreating to first base with 2 down for Phil Garner. Scrap iron, rounded to short his first chance. Fidrich, 3-5, blank again. We go to Garner. 3-4, and it's ground ball to third. As Rodriguez throws to Thompson to end the inning, nothing doing. And now we'll get a new pitcher for the A's. It'll be Stan Bonson. As the A's come away empty in the fifth, we go to the sixth. It's 5 nothing Tigers here from Oakland. And let's make sure we've got who we need. we got Stan Bonson. That's who we need. In the 76th season, he was 8-7 and seven with a 3-3-4 ERA and zero saves. He was a starter and a reliever. And I think... I'm not mistaken, he actually relieved in this game. I'd have to double-check it, but I think he did. I think that's why I had him up front. But 
could be wrong on that. Either way, as we look at the future starters uh, after this game, it's Norris. Oh, you know what? Bonson does start in two days. Hmm. Do they want to pitch Bonson then? I could have sworn he pitched in this game. Maybe he didn't. You know what? I'm going to override that because I just noticed he pitches in two days. That's something good about the score sheet as it tells you future starting pitchers. We're right here with Torres. The next three starting pitchers are Doris, Bonson, and Blue. So I'm going to override that original decision for Stan Bonson. And we're going to go to somebody else. We're going to go to Dick Bosman. So Dick Bosman is actually going to be the starter, not or the reliever, not Stan Bonson, because Stan Bonson starts in two days. So Dick Bosman, four and two with a four one zero ERA, but just to me it just made more sense because you don't want to use a guy that's going to start in two days. So Dick Bosman is on, and he will pitch to Scrivener, and then we flip the order over to Lafleur. And Dan Meyer. It's five nothing Tigers here in the sixth. Bosman five three chance for a walk. That's a ten. That's a nine. So it's a leadoff walk to Scrivener. Not a good way to start if you're Bosman. Scrivener can't go anywhere. There's no chance of a balk or pickoff, so we won't do any strategy roll. Plus it's five. It's a five run difference with only four innings, so strategy rolls are pretty much nixed unless the game gets closer. Bosman one one possible hit by pitch. He's a two, minus six, no hit by pitch, so we move on to the floor. Six, two is a single pass second. So the floor singles, and to get from first to third on an S4, you need a BR rating of three or higher. Scrivener is a three, so he will make it to third base. No throw even needed there. Runners are at the corners. And again, we're not going to steal anything with the five run difference, so the floor is just going to hold tight. Infield is, boy, do you want to play him in? I guess they're going to, I guess they're going to play him in. I don't know what else to do. Down five, nothing. Could play for the double play. I guess could do that to try to prevent a big inning. So we'll play for the double play. Although, and you know what? No, they're going to play, they're going to play. Mm. What do you do? They're going to play normal. Meyer's got a four double play rating, so they're going to play normal depth. They're not going to. That way, they're, they're, if it's a range check, they don't lose anything. But we're going to play normal infield depth. 5-6. Meyer's a lefty. That's a home run chance. It doesn't worry about. Doesn't matter about the infield. That's a home run automatically. He's a, only a 3, but that's a 1. So Dan Meyer on that 5-6 just hit a 3-run homer. The second 3-run homer of the game. It is now 8 to nothing Tigers. And Dick Bosman was not the answer that the A's were looking for as... He comes in and gives up three runs immediately, and he's going to be lifted. They just can't tolerate that. They're going to go to a left-hander or not, finally, with Ogilvy, Staub, and Thompson coming up, a bunch of lefties. They're going to go to Paul Lindblad. So Bosman couldn't get it done. He faced three batters and gave up three runs. So this has turned into the proverb as the score is now 8 to nothing. All right, Ogilvy now. He hit a, well, he got hit by a pitch last time. He's going to face Lindblad, lefty on lefty, 4-5. Range play at Oakland, Coliseum. And it's interesting, I just noticed they misspelled Coliseum on the Oakland page. I don't know if Chris knows that, but <laughs> the Oakland Coliseum is missing the S. I just, I just happened to notice that, but it's not, not a big deal. But might want to fix that for future reference. All right, so now it's a range play at Oakland Coliseum, 5-1. It's an S plus 7. Left fielder is, Bale, is, I'm sorry, is Rudy. His range is a 3. So if he can get to this 3 or less, he'll make the catch. He does not. So now that means it's a single plus 7, which means Ogilvy is going to get a single, but he's got a chance to extend it to a double. Rudy's is a minus 1, which turns his BR to a 2. So I'm going to re-roll this. If it's a one or two, he makes it into a double. Three, four, five, he holds. Six, he is out trying to stretch it. And he's going to have to hold with a single. So holding with a single is Oglevy. 
He's a board. Of course, there's no strategy roll to worry about. Here's Rusty Staub, infield double play depth. 3-6 is potential walk. Staub walks at a 12 against lefty. That's a 6, so he will walk. And now the A's bullpen is starting to implode. They may have well left Torres in there, I guess. All right, here's Thompson. 5-6, that's a potential error. Thompson's card. That's a 4-4. Four, 4-4 four. Four, four is a star line 4, which is a ground ball to first. Wayne Gross has a 20 error rating, so obviously the 8's going to be an error. Failed error check. And I'm guessing that's just a one base error because there's no throw involved. It just says boots ball for one base. So error E3, that's the second error on the A's. And there's still nobody out, and the bases are loaded. So it's going from bad to worse for the Oakland A's. Bases loaded and nobody out. Infield at double play depth. They need outs. They're not worried about one run. They need outs. Here's Rodriguez. Rodriguez is up. 5-4. That's a home run question mark. Against right-handers, it's 1-12. to That's a 1. So he passes that check. We're over here at Rodriguez against a left-handed pitcher. 16 is his home run number. So if he hits a 16 or less on this D20, it is a grand salami. It is a grand salami for Aurelio Rodriguez. And Paul Lindblad, not the answer either because he can't get anybody out. So let's go to the bullpen again. Incredible. And I don't think inside pitch that I'm aware of has any... Uh, you know, factors in the chance of a position player pitching. I don't think that factors in. So we'll have to figure out what we're going to do. Limblad wasn't the answer. They're going to go to Jim Todd, right-hander. Probably don't want to use Raleigh Fingers in a game like this. But Jim Todd is your new pitcher. As Limblad couldn't get anybody out either. And the Tigers have already sent eight to the plate, and all have scored. All eight have scored. It is now... 13 to nothing. 13, no, I'm sorry, 7 have come to the plate. So it's 12 to nothing. My bad, it's 12 nothing. Don't want to make it worse than it already is. It's 12 nothing. Todd, 5 6, wild pitch noise on base. Foul ball, 1 6, and that's a right hander. That's an automatic single, S1. So Wagner's aboard. And that sends us to Bruce Kim, infield double play depth. Desperate for an out. 6 6, range play at Oakland Coliseum. 5-4, and that is a question mark 9, so we're checking the range of the right fielder. That is Don Baylor. He's a 3. And he does make the catch. So thank goodness for that. He made the catch, or it could have really been trouble. It's only one out, so now they bat around. As the man who started the inning, Scribner, is back up. Runner at first, and only one out. 6-2. That's a strikeout chance against a right-hander, but that's an 18. No strikeout. Scrivener, 2-3. Starline, 3. Ground ball to first possible double play. His double play is a 1. They were playing halfway, so that's a 2. And the pivot, the pivot, Campanaris, though, is a minus 1. So it's only going to be a 1 chance for a double play. Won't be a double play. 3 is... Greater than Kim's BR rating, though. I'm sorry, it's not Kim, it's Wagner. It's greater than Wagner's BR rating, though, so it will be a fielder's choice. We'll go 3-6 to six on the fielder's choice. So two down, and that brings up LaFleur. Todd, 6-4. Strikeout chance on LaFleur, but 17 is too much. That's the second time he's caught a break. It was 16 again. But I think he's gotten 17 twice on those checks. So the floor, 4-2, star line 3, ground ball to first. Gross has it. Innings over. And the sixth inning is finally over. But seven runs across the plate. And it is now 12 to nothing. And with that huge lead... The Tigers are going to look and see if there's anybody that they might want to bring in as a defensive replacement. And it looks like they're going to do so in a, at least one position. They're going to bring in Mickey Stanley to play left field for Dan Meyer. He's got a better range 
more of an error, but a better range. So Stanley is a 3, 11, and a 0. Nikki Stanley. But when it's 11 to nothing late in the game, you do kind of empty the bench. In fact, Stanley will get in a bat. He'll lead off the next inning. See if there's anybody else they might want to bring in or do something with. Uh, the DH is Staub, so I think we're going to have Willie Horton. He's going to come in and DH for Staub. Give Staub the rest of the game off. So he will be in there in place of Rusty Staub. So let's make sure we make that change. Okay. So we have Stanley, Ogilvy, and Horton are the next three in line. So I think that's all. I think those are all the changes I need to make. I don't want to hurt the defense for Fidrich. Any, you know, I don't want to bring in other guys that might hurt their defense. So keep it as it is. But Fidrich now with a 12 nothing lead. So it's just a matter of how far do you want Fidrich to go? Uh, he's tossing a shutout. So as long as he touch tossing the shutout, he's going to keep going. So Wayne Gross leads things off. 5-5, five, five. that's a strikeout chance. That's a one. He struck him out. Strikeout number two for the Tigers. That'll bring up Bill North. 4-2, and that's another strikeout chance. That's a 15, though. Too much. Look at the North's card. 1-6. He's going to fly it to right field. And finally, the second fly ball out of the game. <laughs> Most of their outs have been ground ball outs. And as I'm looking... Very interesting. The only hit of the game by the A's was Bill North, who led off the game with a single. They have not gotten a hit since. I just noticed that. Thought he had a no-hitter at first, but then I realized Bill North got a leadoff single. Here's Campanaris. 3-6. That's a strikeout chance. That's a 5. So he will strike him out in the inning. That is strikeout number 3 for Fedrich through 6 innings. But he's tossing a 1-hit shutout through 6 innings. So he is in cruise control. Jim Todd back out. And Todd, let's see, he's faced four batters. He can face up to seven before he gets tired. So they're going to try to at least get him through this seventh inning. And then we'll have to dig deep into their bullpen to get somebody else out here to pitch. I'm thinking it's going to be Paul Mitchell. I don't even know if Paul Mitchell was on the roster at the time, but I guess that's what we'll have to go with. Because I don't, I don't know who else was on the roster at the time. But he did pitch 142 innings. So I'm going to go ahead and put him in there whether he was or wasn't on the roster. I guess it's, at this point, it's almost, it's pretty much irrelevant because I'm not doing a replay on the Tiger batters, just the Tiger pitcher. So if we bring in somebody that wasn't really there, it's not the end of the world. All right, so Jim Todd to Mickey Stanley. His first at bat. 3-1 is a walk chance. Stanley will not walk. It's too high. Go to Stanley's card, 3-2. He's going to fly to left. So Mickey Stanley flies out, one away. Here's Ogilvy, 6-5. And that's a home run question mark. 1-14, to passes a check. That's a 9. So Ogilvy goes deep. He's got a 20. So that means Ogilvy is going to go deep right away automatically. Ben Ogilvy having a great day. He had a sacrifice fly, got hit by a pitch. He singled, and now he's homered, and he scored three runs, driven in two runs. So great day for Ogilvy. It is now 13 to nothing. Favor of the Tigers. Here's Willie Horton. 2-1. Possible single, but he's not tired yet because he hasn't faced seven batters. He's only faced let's see, or has he? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is his seventh batter, so he hasn't. he's not going to tire just yet. 2-1, so he's not going to be tired. Little Horton, 1-3, and that is a double to right field for Willie Horton on the 1-3 chance. So a double to Willie Horton. Now Todd is fatigued, so if he, if he finds those fatigue rolls, he will have to come out immediately. Jason Thompson, 3-2 is a potential. That's a blank, not a potential walk. Thompson, 2-3. That's a single pass second. And on the S4, I think Willie Horton doesn't run. He only runs at a 1, so he's not going anywhere. He's going to stop at third base. So runners are at the corners with one out. Infield double play depth looking to turn two. Not that it matters at this point. Here's Rodriguez. 
Five, one. That's a ballpark card. We're going to Oakland for Rodriguez. One, one. That's a star line one. Ground ball to first. Possible double play. He's up to a four. But the pivot is the shortstop Campaneris, which drops him one back to the three. So one to three is a double play. The four is not going to be a double play, but four is greater than Thompson's BR rating of three. So it will be a fielder's choice, and the run will score. Horton will come in to score, making it 14 to nothing. And they get a 3-6 fielder's choice. We're out number two. Couldn't quite turn the double play. And you wonder if the infield could have been in, but when the score is this bad, does it really matter? It is one out. 1-1 one, one is blank on Todd. Wagner, 4-2. Question mark seven. His numbers go to 13. That's an eight. Eight's going to be a double. So there you go. They would have scored him anyway from third. So the double by Wagner. And Rodriguez's BR rating is a two. But you lose one on a double to left field. And the left fielder Rudy's a minus one. So you lose two on that. So that's a minus two. And his BR is only... A two, so he has to hold. Oh, but there's two outs, though, so that gives him a three. So that means that means he's up to he's down to a one. So a one on the red die, he will score. He will not. It's a two. He has to hold. So he has to hold anyway, even with two outs. So runners at second and third, two down for Bruce Kim. Todd on fumes, six six range play at the ballpark. Two two. Pop up to the catcher, and in this case, that is tennis. His range is only a two, but he makes the catch. Thank goodness for Oakland, he made the catch. Two more runs come in, and that makes the score now 14 to nothing. Tigers over the A's. Sounds more like a football score. It's 14 to zip. That's all for Jim Todd, and Paul Mitchell will come in and mop up in the last two innings. Actually, no, he can't because he's only a starter. He cannot come in. My bad. I'll have, to find, I'll have to find somebody. I really don't want to use Raleigh Fingers. I guess I could use him in the ninth if I had to, but I really don't want to. Uh, let's see who else they might have out there. That can. Uh, do, we'll use Glenn Abbott. I don't know if he's on the roster or not, but Glenn Abbott's going to be your new pitcher in the eighth. So Glenn Abbott. And he's going to try to pitch the eighth and ninth. All right, so Fidrich back out. With a 14-0 lead, pitching a one-hit shutout. And here's Don Baylor. 4-5, and that is a blank. Let's go to Baylor's card. 4-1, pops him up to short. Wagner puts it away, one down. And there is no drama this game at all, but if North had not gotten that base hit, we'd have some drama. But you know what to say about if. 2-5 is a walk chance. That's a three, so he will walk. Joe Rudy. Draws the second walk issued by Fedrich. It's walk two, and he struck out three in this game. Here's Sal Bando. Five, three. Strikeout chance. That's an 11. His strikeout's only a seven, so no strikeout. Four, six. Question mark eight. That's a one. That's a single. So it's a single to center field. And I don't think there's any chance of him going to third on S8. You lose one off your BR rating. His BR rating for Rudy was has drops down to a two. The floor, though, is a one arm gives him a three. So his BR would be a three to do that. But you're you're down fourteen to nothing. Do you really want to run and take a chance of getting that six? Ah, uh, why not? Three or more, he or three or less, he makes it to third. And he does. How about that? So Rudy, hustling even despite the score, he hustles to third base. And now that will send up Gene Tennis. Runners at the corners and one out. Infield double play depth. He's got a double play rating of three. So it becomes a four if there's a ground ball. Fidrich now. 4-1. Possible wild pitch. He's going to wild pitch in a run. How about that? First run allowed comes via a wild pitch, of all things. So a wild pitch takes the double play out of the equation. Infield back to normal now. 
The run does score. It's now 14 to 1. 4 1's another wild pitch. So he's going to wild pitch him again. How many times can you throw a wild pitch like this? Two can say, I'm not going to do If it's a 4 1 again, I'm overruling it. 6 2 is a range play at Oakland. The runner at third, infield back. 4 5, and that is a question mark 7. Range is Mickey Stanley. Made that change defensively from a 2 to a 3 range. So Stanley is a three range left fielder, but even if he catches it, it could be a sack fly. It's a two, so he does make the catch. The question is, is it a sacrifice fly? And we look, tennis sacrifice fly rating is a two. It's a six, so he's not gonna make it there. Do they wanna try to, to bring the run home? The BR rating of Bando is a three. And the arm is a zero. So a three or less, he will make it. Four, he has to hold. He cannot make it. So Stanley, not allowing that run to come across on the sacrifice fly. He holds him up. It stays at third base for Billy Williams. Two, five. Two, five potential walk. And he will draw the base on balls. So that's three walks for Fidgers to go along with three strikeouts. And I'll bring up Garner. Three, two, blank. Go to Garner's card. 4-4. Four, four. That's a fly to right to end the inning. So one run is in. Kind of glad the second one didn't come across after those two wild pitches. That would have seemed a little tainted. But one run is in. It's 14-1 to one as we go to the eighth inning. And Glenn Abbott will be on to pitch. There was a Twins infielder named John. Oh, it's, that's I'm thinking of Castino. I thought there was somebody named Costello It's in one of these fielders somewhere in the 80s or 70s. Maybe there wasn't. I'm thinking of John Castino from the Twins. Could have been Abbott and Castino, I guess. All right, here's Abbott facing Scrivener. 1-3, and that's a home run chance. But And Scrivener's got a 6. That's a 1. So Scrivener had two home runs all year. He just hit one right here as he greets Glenn Abbott with a home run to make it 15-1. to Incredible. What are the odds on that? But that's a home run straight up. No check of any kind. Straight home run. Here's the floor. 5-4. Possible error on a throw. 2-6. It's a single to left. No throw needed. So no error to worry about. Plus that's a 12. It's well above Rudy's error rating anyway. So runner at first. Not, you know, no strategy of course. 1-2. Blank on Abbott. We go to Stanley. 2-3. Ground ball to short, possible double play. That's a four now because of the double play rating. But Abbott takes away two, so that drops him to a two double play rating. And the pivot, the pivot second baseman, garners a zero. So it's a one to two for a double play. And it's a four. So without this minus two, that would have been a double play. But instead, it's a four. So there is no double play. And since the four is not greater than the floor's rating, the floor will actually move up. And it will be a 6-3 ground out for out number one. But the runner, LaFleur, goes to second base. So LaFleur is at second base with one out for Ben Oglevy. 1-2, blank. Go to Oglevy. 6-4. Six, 6-4 four. Six, four is a question mark eight. Goes up to a 16, but that's a 19. So that's simply a fly to center. And that's out number two. LaFleur. Has a four BR. He could move to third on a one. Actually, it'd be a two because Bill North's a plus one. So, a two or less, he moves up to third base. And he does not. He has to hold. So, he holds at second base with two down for Willie Horton. Three five. That is a possible walk, but Horton, that's a 20. Not going to walk with that. Six four. He lines it to short. Campanaris grabs it. To end the inning, but the Tigers tack on a run on the, on the rare Scrivener homer. Go to the bottom of the eighth. It is 15 to 1. And Fidrich now has faced 26 batters, so he's still good. He can face up to 34, so this could be a complete game. And probably had a, I didn't check it, but he probably had close to a complete game in this game anyway, because it was just 2 to 1 in, in real life. 3 2 for Fidrich is a blank. We move on to Gross. 5-1, Starline 3, ground ball to first, Thompson's got it. 
one down. And that will bring up Bill North. Not that you want to see this nasty looking score sheet with what's going on right now, but I'm trying to fit it in as much as I can. 3 4, that's the star line. One of the star line numbers for Fidrich is a 3 4. And that's a four, which is a ground ball to second. Scribner to Thompson, one or two down. Brings up Campy Campanaris. Three one. Three one's a blank. Campy, five one. And it's a star line three, which is a ground ball to Thompson. He'll take it to the bag himself. Innings over. So we go to the ninth. 15 to 1 is our score. Fitters going for the complete game. Without except for a wild pitch, he'd have a shutout going right now. But he uncorked two wild pitches back to back, which was very strange. Here's Jason Thompson. 2 2 is a strikeout chance. That's a nine. He will strike out. So Jason Thompson whiffs. Brings up Rodriguez. 3 2. Blank on Abbott. 1 5. Fly to center. So two down. So Abbott's trying to save the bullpen. Not even sure if he was, like I said, I don't know if he was on the roster or not, but I don't care at this point. The score being what it is. 6 5 is the ballpark card. Go to Oakland. 2 5 is a star line 2, which is the ground of third. Bando's got it. Innings over. So two innings for Abbott with one run allowed. So I guess that's something. Plus he saved them not having to use Raleigh fingers. All right, so now we go to the bottom of the ninth, 15 to 1. And Fidrich back out. He has faced 29 batters, so he could very well finish this game under 34 batters faced, depending on how he fares. Here's Baylor. 3-2 is a blank on Fidrich. We go to Baylor. 4-5. Four, 4-5. Five. Four, five. That's going to be a single pass the mound. So leadoff single for Baylor. Brings up Joe Rudy. Tutti Fruity O Rudy. 1-4 is a potential walk. 17 is too much. Go to Rudy. 2-6. It's a single to center field. Let's see if Baylor can do anything. He's a BR of four, so might make it to third. Single to center to go from first to third. You lose one, but the center fielder north is a plus one, so that's a wash. So it's a, it's a four or less to get to third base. There he goes. And, of course, he's out. Unbelievable. Should I even, you know what? Nix that. When you're down 15 to 1, you're not taking chances on the bases, so I don't care what the dice say. I'm not going to have a guy get thrown out as the first out of the inning when you're down 15 to 1. His run doesn't mean anything. So I even shouldn't even roll that one, to be honest with you, being what the score is. So some of the rules are, are not going to be hard and st steadfast when it's 15 to 1. All right, here is uh, Fidrich to Bando. 6-5, and that's a range play. 6-2, that's a fly to center. The range is on LaFleur. He is a 3. And it's a 5. You won't get to it. Is it a double? No, it's a single. But that may or may not score a run. We'll see. Single to center. Single to center to score from second. You add 2. And Baylor's already a 4, plus... The floor is a plus one. It gives him a seven, so he will score automatically. And everybody else will just go one base. So it's now 15 to two. And if Fidrich wants to not have his ERA go up, he's got to get the rest of these outs. Right now, he is at 34 batters face, so he can he will be at his fatigue if he hits 4-2 or 4-3. He will hit the fatigue number. Bullpen is ready to come in if needed. They do have uh, left-hander John Hiller ready if needed, but they're going to see if he can get out of this. Fidrich, 6-1, potential walk. 15 is going to be a walk to, Fid to tennis, and that's going to be it for Fidrich. He's going he's gonna to have to leave. He's going to go 8-plus, but maybe he started fatigue. I don't know, but he started giving up some things there. And now with Billy Williams coming up, it'll be John Hiller coming on to face Billy Williams. Now, do the A's want to pinch hit? Uh, let's see here, because Billy Williams hasn't done anything. So they're going to go to who they have on the bench. They don't really have a whole lot on their bench. Their bench is pathetic. 
But because he's right-handed, they're going to go to Ken McMullen. So Ken McMullen will be the new pitcher, or new hitter, rather, for Billy Williams. Ken McMullen. To face the left-hander Hiller. Bases loaded, nobody out. Infield double play depth. Hiller, 3-6. Potential wild pitch. That's a 5. That's going to wild pitch and a run. That's the second run that's come in the game on wild pitches. And that is, of course, his charge to Fidrich, and everybody else will move up. So Fidrich's ERA is going to inch up again. It looks like oh, McMullen's still at the plate. I forgot. It's just a wild pitch. Infield's still back. They need an out. 5-5 five, five is a strikeout plus. They might get an out right here, and they do. That being a 9, that's a strikeout. So McMullen, the pinch hitter, strikes out via that strikeout plus. One away for Phil Garner. 6-3, possible error on a throw. Oh, that re-rolled that because that jumped the boat. 4-4, four, four, and that's a fly to right field, possible sacrifice fly. He's a 1. That's a 2, so he fails that, but they can still do it on the BR rating. Bando's BR rating is a 3, and... The arm rating is a zero. So it's a three or less to score. But if he's thrown out, it's a double play and the game's over. So I think they're going to just hold him there. They're going to hold up the runners. So two down for Wayne Gross. And do they have a pinch hitter for Wayne Gross? Since Wayne Gross is a lefty, they're going to go to the bench for a right-handed pinch hitter. And like I said, they don't have a whole lot. They're going to go to Larry Haney, backup catcher. He will pinch hit for Wayne Gross because he is a lefty. Or he is a righty, I should say. So Larry Haney, pinch hit Gross was over 3, so that's, they're not losing anything there. So he will pinch hit with the runners at 2nd and 3rd and 2 outs. Hiller trying to finish this thing off. 3-5 or going to the ballpark card. 3-2, and that's a rare play. Boy, we wait this long in the game, we get a rare play. Do you believe that? Rare play with runners on base. We, it's a 2-D-6 roll. And we get a 62. So a 62 says, Slow roller fielded by the catcher who possibly bobbles, then throws wild to first. Resolve by rolling against the catcher error rate first, and then for the throw. So we've got two error checks on Kim. Kim is a 4. So he passes that error check. I'm sorry, he's a 12. So he passes that error check. Oh, I should be rolling a 20. My bad. I was doing range check. What am I thinking? All right, so this D20 roll has to be under a 12. It's a 12 exactly. So that means he, he bobbles it for an error. Let's see if he makes the throwing error. 16, he does not. So it's, just, it's a bobble error, so the run will score. That's an unearned run, so that's going to be key for Fidrich. He will end with only two, three earned runs. Uh, any other runs coming in now will be unearned. So that's an E2. So that's big for the earned run average. It's an E2, and that puts runners at the corners now. And if three runs are in, it is now 15 to 4. So E2 there puts runners at the corners for Bill North. So Hiller trying to get out of this, and get out of this weird inning, 6 3 in this weird game. Air on a throw possible. 2-4. Ground ball to first. His air rating is a 9. That's a 19, which means he will make the play. And Hiller finally ends this thing. But three runs come in for the Tigers. I'm sorry, for the A's. And this game is finally, mercifully over. A huge game took over an hour to play, which is very unusual for inside pitch. But with all these runs, you really have no choice. Uh, and this really didn't take that much longer because I'm recording. This was just one of these games that just just went on and on, which is ironic because the real game was two to one. So final score, 15 to four. And we'll do the numbers on Fidrich. He gave up four runs and three earned in eight plus innings. No home runs. Let's see how many hits he gave up. He only gave up one to this point. Two through seven and two through eight, through eight innings, he was pitching a two hit shot, a two hitter with a one run allowed, and then in in the in his, the ninth, it's one two three hits there, so that's five hits he gave up. He uncharacteristically walked 
three, actually walked four. Very uncharacteristic, walking four, striking out three. So if we look at his numbers, now let's add in this number. So he goes to 190. He goes to five hits is 157. Three earned runs is 45. Nothing there. He walked four, which gives him 38. Struck out three gives him 65, but he does get the win to improve to 14 and six. ERA will bump up just a tad. So since he lost this game, I believe he, he dropped to 15 and six after this loss. So now he's 14 and six, and his ERA is going to be pretty much the same or very close. So very happy with how Inside Pitch is produce, reproducing these numbers for Fidrich. A uh, very wild game, as I said. Mark Fidrich gets the victory. And his next start, start number 23 out of 29, will be on September the 3rd is the replay date. It'll be back in Tiger Stadium against the Milwaukee Brewers. So until next time, hope you enjoyed that presentation of the Mark Fidrich replay. Until next time, enjoy playing whatever game you choose to play, how you choose to play it, and I will see you all.